Not Your Professional Walkthroughs Channel presents... Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to mini-series for Parkasaurus here on Not Your Professional Walkthroughs Channel with me, your host Max. If you were able to come across regarding the video of if you should be buying this title or no since it's in early access, welcome again. If you are a brand new viewer, welcome too. Now, I usually don't do early access uh, playthroughs for a game, usually due to the fact that there tend to be lots of changes and at certain points it might actually corrupt your previous save file or certain features might have been discontinued or have been changed, therefore you will see dramatic difference in the overall performance, but I have been playing this game in order to try and bring more content regarding this title, as I really do enjoy these uh, Zoo Tycoon types of games. And honestly, I think for the purposes for the channel, I'm gonna try to do at least one of the world map scenarios and based on the overall feedback, if there will be any, I will try to potentially bring you even more content, such as, for example, how to properly start a zoo or something like this. Just more uh, structured form would be provided in that type of video. I do all sorts of things from playthroughs to tips to discussions, so... If there will be feedback for that, I will try to do so. Now, obviously, since I will be going through the game, I will try to provide you with as much information as I can and try to provide it in as much structural form as potentially possible. Now, for the purposes of uh, this content, I will be also testing out my new microphone for the channel, which I have picked up because a friend of mine have been telling me that a headset is not the proper way to start off the channel. Well, I mean, I have been doing this for over a year and I did not hear that many complaints about the microphone quality. It was more about what the hell was I saying, but anyhow, for the purposes of this video, we will see how this will work and if you can provide me with the feedback, I would be appreciative. Also, uh, since this is a better microphone, what might happen is because I have a mechanical keyboard for now, uh, it might pick up on some of the clicking noise, so I do apologize for that in advance. I'm quite sure it will be impossible to clear out in the editing, so I will try to press the keys as uh, slowly or softly as I potentially can with my bear-like paw, but we will see what will happen. Anyhow, I'm gonna shut up now. We're gonna head into the Toronto scenario for the purposes of this. Uh, in order to help me out, I was able, thanks to some previous gameplay and experience, uh, accumulate certain research points for which I... Uh, picked up two perks, so one of them allows my employees to gain experience, and the other one is for additional donations for the park. And I will explain why this matters as we go through the game. So I have actually reset this scenario, and we will start it off. So I'll talk to you once we are in the park itself. Okay, so we should be in our lovely park. Uh, if I go over the view, you should be able to see the world that we are working with. Now, this is a part of our zoo. I'm just not really sure how to get to it as of yet. Uh, there might be space through here, but we will have to work our way through there. Now, for the purposes of the video, I will close the park at first, and I have also paused this. So, why did I do so? Obviously, when your guests arrive to the park, you are 
creating certain appeal based on the enclosures and the dinosaurs which you can provide to show to your guests. Uh, if your guests would however arrive and the park is empty, they would just mingle here by the entrance, uh, pay the entry fee which is like the $5 and then leave. Now honestly it's more efficient for you to start off the game by pausing it immediately. While you are in this mode you are still able to utilize functions like uh, construction of defenses or equipping your park or making it more visitor friendly shall we say. And by that I don't mean that you will release the tap. Renosaurus at the unsuspecting guests, it's just that uh, there are certain features which the guests will require from concession stands to toilets to other stuff that will help them stay at your park even longer and spend much more money. Okay, so for this scenario we have few main goals that we need to reach. So the dino appeal which is measured here needs to be at 500. We need to have 4 dinosaurs overall and we need to unlock uh, like 2 sciences. Now the science is divided between hearts and the science points. I will go over them briefly. Whenever you start off a zoo based on how many points you have been able to unlock, like I said in the start of the video, I had the extra experience for the employees and the extra donations. There are additional bonuses such as for example you being able to get additional starting eggs so that you are not starting off just with one dinosaur like we are most likely gonna be starting here because we have only one ankylosaurus egg available to us. So. What do we need to therefore do in order to start off our zoo properly? This area over here is a perfect spot for the first enclosure. I know it's kind of strange to have houses built around it, especially considering the fact that the Ankylosaurus is the dinosaur you will able to see even in the Jurassic World movies, those were those spiky looking dinosaurs with the giant mace at the end of the tail, so yeah, if they would try to redecorate their houses it would be quite possibly easy to done or to be done by the dinosaurs. Anyhow, if you want to construct your enclosure you need to go into the fences and doors and here you are usually starting with the wooden fence and the concrete fence. The reason why you don't have the Tyrannosaurus at the start is that uh, trying to keep it behind a wooden fence would probably not make too much sense, right? So I'm gonna try to do a basic layout for the first enclosure. Now there is no exactly proper way for you to do this. What will matter is the size of the enclosure, I can guarantee you that. But other than that, uh, you can go based on what you feel and later on you can even return to your original design once you unlock more types of fences and you can change it around in order to make it more appealing to your guests. So just bear with me, I will probably speed this part of the footage up and I'll talk to you once this has been constructed. Okay, so once we have our exhibit, uh, this is the way I have decided to go. Now, the fences have certain features, such as the strength and privacy. We're gonna talk about the privacy later on, but I usually tend to put the concrete fence around places where the guests will not be able to 
Go and CD Dinosaur. And since we have this pre-built gazebo over here with some of these lovely benches, I'm gonna actually utilize the wooden fence so that the customers or the visitors can come here, sit down, relax, and enjoy the view. Now, if you want your dinosaur to actually hatch, you cannot be in the paused state. You will actually need to unpause the game, but because we are still not done setting up certain things for our zoo, because we have certain budgets through which we can theoretically burn, there are a few more things which I would really, really like to do. So the entrance is here. The cool thing about this game is that it actually allows you to fully customize the look of it. So you want, let's say, a red roof or white walls or whatever. You can go crazy with the customization and you should be able to do this for uh, even the concession stands which can be found in your buildings. So the buildings which I will definitely try to get done for my park is the research station. We're gonna try to put in like at least the dino dogs or the balloon shop, something which will provide food. Then we are gonna have to put some outhouses into our park. However, as you can see when I hover the mouse over the outhouse, it shows us that it can accommodate one customer, it helps to relieve them, but unfortunately it has uh, three negative points to the overall aesthetics of the park. So we are gonna have to definitely get our hands on much prettier decorations or later on toilets that will not be scaring every guest away. Because for example, when I was a kid, I did spend a lot of time with my grandparents in the country and the country house did not have a proper plumbing so we only had an outhouse like this and my dumb father made this horrible joke that if I will sit there for too long a spider will crawl from well the hole and uh, yeah ever since then I had kind of a phobia of outhouses and spiders. So we're gonna try to make sure that this does not happen to any of our guests. And you can let me know in the comment section if any of your fathers did used to do dumb jokes like that. I am happy to read about it. Okay, so a uh, few things which we will also need to do. Employee building is something which I will definitely want to touch upon. That is due to the fact that we will need to get the staff for our park. Now, where can you get the staff for your park? You have the main menu option. The F1 is for your zoo, F2 is to visit the town, F3 is for the office, F4 is for the portal and excavation of fossils, F5 is for science, and 6 is for the hearts. I will try to cover all these points as much as I can during these playthroughs so that we can have some basic understanding and like I said if there will be a feedback I will later on try to compile the footage and uh, provide you with like I don't know top 10 tips on how to start your zoo the proper way what to do what not to do okay so uh, what would be a great thing to do now when it comes to the money like I said uh, the money is generated on a day and night cycle. The zoo is open from around, well, it looks like 5 a.m. God damn it! Wow. Okay. Probably never get me to the zoo that early in the morning, but okay. And closes around 9 p.m. So at the end of the day, you get the overall summary where you will find out how much money do you generate. At the start of the game, the Entry fee is your not main source of income, believe it or not. This is also why I have added the additional 25% into the uh, donations. So the primary source of income is from donations to your park. And there is the structure for $5. 
which is the donation box. Whatever zoo you are building, make sure to monitor where most of your visitors go through and chuck it full of donation boxes. Trust me, the $5 for a donation box is nothing compared to how much money it will generate to you. So I'm gonna actually even put uh, one donation box here by the gazebo so that whenever the guests go here to take a look at the Ankylosaurus egg, they will most likely give us some additional money. What else should we do here? Now, since this is kind of out of sight point, I like to put the first outhouses right over here. That way the guests can potentially go here, do their business and then return to the park and the more pleasant experience, should I say. Theoretically, if you want to, you can even put like a gazebo over here so that the guests can view the enclosure through this place and also get some relax over here because the pathway has been pre-constructed due to the houses being here. Now, what else can we do to make the park look pretty? I definitely recommend some form of a lighting that can be placed along the pathway because in the evening this will help to make the park more pleasant to stay at even until the closing time so you might be able to keep the guests there a bit longer and therefore they will be willing to spend even more money. Another thing which you can do is the decorations. Now right now we do not possess that many beautiful decorations but I'm still gonna try to at least uh, put a couple of them alongside here. Uh, if you want to be really specific about it, uh, thanks to the square system of the construction, you are able to, let's say, count like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 points in between, and then you can do the same. So let's say 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and in between of them, we can put somewhere like here or here uh, one of the lights. If you want to change the direction in which the structure is pointed towards, the R button is your friend, as this will let you rotate the structure and therefore you can play around with it and make it much more aesthetically pleasing for your guests and turn the zoo into your vision at the end of the day. So, I'm gonna squeeze in one more bush like this. Uh, that was probably a weird sentence for anyone listening, but let's try to overlook that. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Okay, I kind of uh, turned off the construction accidentally, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. We're gonna put down that light over there, and therefore, our guests have this lovely path through which they can go. Now later on we can take away some of these bushes, replace them and put for example like this stone arch there. Reason behind I don't want to put it here despite the fact that it has a lot of decorative points for the park is that it costs 5000 gold or $5000 and we have only six thousand forty one dollars left and because I will need to spend more money when the ankylosaurus hatches in the enclosure uh, I'm gonna need to make sure that I have certain money to even try to run the park and pay the fee for my staff now since we are talking about the staff uh, you can go into the office and here you have a few things. You see the calendar, which will tell you how long you have been playing this. And you have, for example, like the map overview, the overall summary, how much you can earn or how much do you spend, the overall feedback, the reviews, the stats of your dinosaurs, the overall finances, what buildings do you have, how many staff, and so on and so on. And for the purposes here, we're gonna grab the vet, 
we're gonna return to the zoo and when your zoo will be much larger what you can actually do is hover over the employee view and this will show you where the employee is at and then pick them up move them around you can even keep the game pause for the purposes of that and one more thing which i would definitely love to do to make sure that we have three sources of income is to pop down like the dino dogs now uh, i really would love to put it here but i don't like the fact that it's actually like getting into the road uh, so instead I might just go with uh, the sweet tooth and like place it right over here against uh, this small little viewing point for our guests. I'm not really sure how would I call this otherwise. So we're gonna put this here. Make sure to put down trash cans or garbage bins by these types of shop. Otherwise your guests will just throw the junk all over the floor and that also affects the overall uh, cleanliness and happiness of your guests. So because we are actually picking up trash and thinking about trash, let's make sure we have a janitor. And one thing which you can do when you are checking each janitor or veterinarian or any of the other classes of employees is to see what types of tasks do they want to do. So let's say your park is at certain stage, you have like four enclosures. Let's say you have two veterinarians specifically for refilling the food and two veterinarians just for healing the dinosaurs. And then you can have your janitor janitors or janitorial staff, whichever way you want to call them. And if you go in their details, for example, when you hire a janitor, they never have clear junk. They have stuff like repair defenses or clean bathrooms, but we definitely want to make sure that uh, our janitor will be picking up the trash from our guests. Okay, so we have this established for the start of the park. All the basic requirements for now should be met, so we are gonna actually crack the park open, and we're gonna unpause the game, and the visitors will start to arrive on all sorts of boats. Now, I have been personally to Toronto, but I have never seen this part of the town. So if you are from there and you are potentially watching this video, please let me know where did I miss this, because uh, Toronto is really pretty town, or city, sorry. Okay, so, as you can see, money is being collected, that is perfectly fine. Here in the piggy bank is where you will see the till being collected, so you will see how many guests can then later on show up at your park. Make sure that you pay attention to this because it's important to know how many visitors are inside and how many are waiting to pay for the entrance. So since we have put in some decorations, they seem to be happy. And since we are able to hatch Amory or Baby Ankylosaurus, it's a girl, we are able to start changing the enclosure to make it into the perfect biome for her. As you can see, a stupid amount of guests are rushing to the wooden fence to take a look at her, but we're gonna have to sort of terraform this piece of land. And before we do that, make sure that you go into the town and you will pick up the veggies. Now I'm gonna pause the game here because the dinosaurs in the game are uh, basically belonging to certain groups of sizes and based on the size you will be feeding them certain type of food so for example the basic plant can be given to any baby then you have a grass which is given to like the small dinosaurs because the ankylosaurus is considered a medium-sized dinosaur it would be more beneficial to do the bushes here and we are gonna actually pick up five 
And here is something that you need to monitor and learn at the start of your game. There is an ordering system for your food. You can do this for either the veggies or for the meats. So when you want to pick up some of the carnivores in the game, you can totally do this. Now, because the carnivores usually require certain specific environments which are available to you, but you don't have certain things like, let's say, desert trees or desert rocks or other things which would make the enclosure have the perfect biome for them, we're not gonna go into the carnivores for now. So, when you want to make sure that you are getting your food in and your dinosaurs are not starving, it's usually good to take a look at a few things. When you go into the exhibit, you have, for example, the small vegetarian feeder or the small meat feeder. When you pop down the small vegetarian feeder, it will actually show you its capacity. So if I were to return to the town and I know that for the next few days I'm gonna have only one enclosure because it's gonna take a while till I get more eggs or more dinosaurs, I can put in, let's say, order for four bushes. Now the orders usually tend to arrive in the morning and you can see like a crate being placed at the entrance of the zoo. Now, you can click on this, you don't have to, but the importance of ordering your food is due to the fact that if you compare the price of buying the supply of plants now and having it ordered, there is actually a saving. And right now it might not look like, look, $10, not much of a saving, right? But think of the park being open for the next 100 days. That's 100 times 10, which is $1,000, saved just by you making sure you have the right food order placed in. So, what can we do now? Well, the vet will actually go in and feed the animal, so that is perfectly fine. But when we want to make the enclosure more appealing for Amory, what we need to do is click on this, view my exhibit, because each animal tends to, how should I say this, uh, prefer a certain environment. So for example, the Ankylosaurus, which is from the late Proteaceous period, uh, does prefer taiga type environment. Now for those of you who don't know, taigas are large large forests of the uh, let's say pine types of trees so I'm, I'm quite sure there's like a term on how to describe a tree which does not have leaves but these kind of spiky things I really cannot put my finger on it right now but anyhow uh, the best way for you to monitor the progress of how well you are setting up the enclosure is to have the scenery view opened or the menu opened and on the other end have the details of your dinosaur and when you go into the view my exhibit you will be able to see that he will want to have like a taiga and for that we will probably need some more mountains in order to make it more appealing and also we're gonna have to plant in certain amount of trees certain amount of bushes and put in a bunch of rocks so if we want to mess around with the elevations of the park we need to go into the terrain which is menu number six and here we will be able to play around with like elevate so i'm gonna go around and i'm gonna start to do these tiny spikes and you will see the small red dot basically moving. Based on what I will try to do here. Hopefully it will work. It's slowly moving, so we are doing something right.
And I'm gonna put mostly some of these hills next to like the concrete walls just for the purposes of uh, making sure that uh, it will not somehow obstruct our guests from being able to uh, have a pleasant experience looking at the animals. Now of course we need to make sure that the animal is properly treated too, but uh, we, we should be fine. Not find fine. Okay, what else? Woo -hoo -hoo, whoa, how did this get so big? Okay, definitely don't want to mess around with that. Let's put in a few more elevated spaces just for the heck of it. And we will see what Amory will think of that. So the things are changing. It's looking more like forest now. The grass is perfect for him, so we don't actually need to go into the terrain and tiles and change the grass tile. So what we will start doing right now is start planting some trees. I'm gonna put some pines over here at the hill. And when you plant the trees or bushes around the enclosure, you will notice that actually it should be close to a water source. So fun thing is that if you, for example, put like small apple trees here by this water, they are perfectly fine. But we are definitely gonna have to put down some water for our lovely Amory over here. And we're gonna switch the plants to bushes so that the vet will actually feed him. And let's take a look at what else can we do to keep changing the exhibit to be even more Amory friendly, shall we say. Now, it looks like we have met the quota for the trees, so we can switch to bushes and potentially try to put down a couple of those too. Okay, and last but not least, let's put down some rocks. Now, when it comes to me as uh, this well, experienced player of tycoon types of games, I usually tend to put stuff like rocks close to like defenses because, especially in the mornings when you start off your day, the animals might be angry or something and they will go to the fence and try to smash through it. So yeah, that will definitely need to be something that we will keep an eye out for. Okay, we are at 61%. He is well fed, but he is lacking privacy. And just by having this one enclosure, we have already 110 appeal from the 500 that we should be getting. Let us check what else. Okay, so a few more rocks would be something that Amory would appreciate. Okay, but we still kind of need to screw around with the elevation in order to make the dino a bit more happy. If we can make like a small tiny hill here and let's put down some water okay this will do this will do we are more in the forest type of area that really don't want to like go and screw around too much with the elevation because if you screw it up properly, uh, what might happen is that trying to fix it will become quite a pain in the ass. Uh, there's no better way to say it. Sorry, but that's the truth of it. Okay, uh... Ruggedness. I'm not really sure how well else should I try to change these things around but I'm really hoping that this will do it and if you have a large square like this here you are able to change like how many squares you want to affect the terrain okay So we are going to leave it at this point, we are at 75%, that should do it for now, I mean it's still a baby, and what we are going to do now is put in some privacy for him. 
So in order to accommodate privacy before you get things like shelter or you would utilize only like the concrete fence is to utilize the privacy tiles. These are certain high or tall grass types of tiles which allow your dinosaur to hide in or sleep within. So we are gonna put in a few of those and Amory will be able to go in them and hide. This might make some of the guests unhappy because of course they will not be able to see her but uh, it will definitely help to improve her stats. Now you will see the change only once she goes into the bushes and like takes a nap. So before that don't go all crazy and spending too much money on covering the entire enclosure in the privacy tiles. It will more likely bankrupt you. So you can see now it's finally starting to build up. She might most likely take a nap, she's all cute, the guests seem to be happy, the donation box will show you how many donations have been made and at what type of donation. So for example one person has donated 13 and the other is like one or two. And we see that there were some sales potentially done, overall the income for today is over $498, so almost like $500, which is not that bad for starting day. Now, if you want to make the park more appealing, I'm going to pause the game because soon we are going to reach the end of the day summary, you need to do research. Now, research is actually divided into two types. One is conducted by the human personnel or the scientists of your park. <sighs> Water. And basically, this affects everything which happens outside of the enclosure itself. So concession stands, better decorations, better toilets. Yes. As a scientist with a PhD at zoo, certain people will have to develop how to get a better toilet. I know, it's a dream come true. The second type of research, which is conducted by the happiness of your animals, is the heart. This affects everything which happens inside of the enclosure. So if you want to get, for example, uh, a home for your or shelter for your dinosaur if you want to get some toys if you want to get better ways to feed them based on the happiness you will be getting the hard points now the main difference between these two is that science points are actually earned throughout the day while the hard points are actually earned at the end of the day during the summary time which is when you will find out if the dinosaur was happy and based on that you are gonna get your hands on a bunch of hard points. And this will become important especially when we will try to discuss getting more dinosaurs. Now when you want to get the science and the research, what you need to do is to get the building which is the research station. This is one of your early ways to get science points. There are actually more ways for you at the start of the game to get science, and that is specifically by science learn tech over here for 320 science points. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and unlock this because I want to show you. So either we get the research station, and I usually recommend putting it somewhere out of sight, so like over here behind this house and where the guest will not be going there to like take a look at it because it doesn't do anything for the guests. Also the great thing about this game is that you don't have to like uh, uh, create a power grid or water grid so it's not like uh, uh, city skylines for example, right? So you can just put it out of sight and the science points will be generated. And the second way is this stone science presentation. This is another way you can earn science points and basically how it works is that a scientist will give presentation or speech 
to your guests and the more guests that are around the more science points you might be able to get but i'm gonna probably leave the science for tomorrow so i'm just gonna speed this up we're gonna take a look at the overall summary for today see how we did on day one and we're gonna take it from there and on the next day we're gonna talk about things like how to get more dinosaurs and what are the things we can do to improve the overall experience of our guests who seem to be unhappy. So, as you can see, we have one happy dinosaur, or one happy dinosaur, which proves the point that the hearts are gained at the end of the day. Here at the overview of your map, you are able to see that despite the fact that uh, you have only one enclosure, most of the guests have still wandered off God knows where, and the highest concentration of all the people were around this walkway. So this will be our primary real estate, which we will try to fill in with as many donation boxes or potentially the concession stands and other crap that they don't really, really need, but we need their money in order to make this zoo the best zoo that there can be and to improve our overall appeal since we have only 110 and we need to get to like 500. So we see that we have earned or lost um, more money that we have earned. Now as I said, uh, usually it works that uh, your ticket sales are not your primary income, it's more the donations. And then it's like the concession stands. At your first date, this might be different because usually uh, if you are especially new to the game, you might not know what to put where and what will bring you the most amount of money. So we have only two donation box as of yet. We'll definitely try to improve that. We will try to cram in as much stuff as we can so that the guests will spend even more money. But yeah, that is it for now. And we are going to go into the second day and I'll talk to you when we are there. So I'm going to pause the game yet again because we are at the start of our day. As you can see, the food is missing. But because we have gone to the town and we have the order in, we are going to get the bush for our ankylosaurus. Now we can see already a form of line trying to be created. So maybe I should try to say this differently. So we already see some visitors at 5.20 a.m. at the entrance of the zoo. This is probably like a dream come true for any zoo manager who can ever manage a zoo. But realistically speaking, this is more a load of hooey. But anyhow, what we are gonna do is we are gonna start off by placing a dino dog stand right over here by the entrance. Because we saw based on the overall performance that a massive amount of people were just basically standing here and not moving. So we're gonna try to at least get some of their cash. Now, because this is kind of in the corner, I'm gonna connect this. We're gonna put in a trash can. And for this, I'm gonna actually get another janitor. And also I'm gonna grab a security personnel and these are important as for example they can tranquilize an escaped dinosaur or they can catch a thief at your park which will actually make sure that you get the money instead of the thief and one more person which I want to get is the scientist and that is because we are gonna start generating some science points now before I actually go and play around with the science, what I want to do is make sure that our newly hired janitor will be clearing the junk. 
beautiful. And like I said, uh, there are a few ways for us to earn science points. Now at the start of the game, it's probably better to just go with the research station. And when we click on our scientist, we can do is move her and place her over here. And if you unpause the game, you will see this science bubble being filled. Now, this is where leveling up your employees will become extremely important. See, the box was there, our veterinarian or someone was able to go grab it, and now we should be able to restock the food for our Ankylosaurus. I'm gonna probably have to increase the order. Let's get it. Let's ignore what I just say and let's go for eight pieces of bush. This should do it for now. I don't even know where she is hiding at. Okay, so she's somewhere around here. Seems to be happy. The privacy is going all over the place. Maybe we're gonna have to put in more privacy tiles. So I'm gonna put them over there. I can put them here by the entrance, that way she can sneak up on the veterinarian in the morning who's bringing her some food. And because they actually don't see the dinosaur, they might be unhappy, which is why we need to make sure that we will have some science points and hard points in order to create more enclosures and make the park more appealing. <laughs> Now, like I said, if I would want to, and I definitely will want to, I can put down the presentation block, and for that, I'm gonna actually hire one more scientist. I'm gonna pause the game so that I can find him in this mess. Now, if you have a crowded zoo and you don't know where your employees are, if you just hover over the employee view, it will show you exactly which one from the crowd is a scientist or veterinarian or whatsoever. And when we put down the second scientist over here, you now see that I am actually gonna be generating more science points. Because he is level 2 and there are a lot of people, he's able to generate a whole lot more science points potentially compared to our level 1 scientist. And this is why it's actually amazing that you can level up your employees. The reason why most zoo tycoon types of games don't do this, I don't know. But the employees play another important game or another important part in the game, which is where they actually help you to go on expeditions to uncover fossils for more species which you can then populate your zoo with so because we have actually a scientist if you would go in his profile you're able to see his speed so that is uh, what speed or at what speed or pace he performs the task his ability, so how efficiently does he do the task, and personality, which is how pleasantly does he communicate with your guests. So let's say you have a janitor who keeps cursing at your guests for throwing the trash outside of the trash can. This can have negative effect, so if you actually level him up, this can be done and you can increase his personality and therefore less negatively affect the overall stay of your visitors, of whom we have now 62. The fun thing is that one of the few bugs which I came across in this game is that if you sometimes hover over like vegetables or meat and then you go over the counter of your guests, it will actually show you vegetables. But other than that, I have not experienced any form of crashes or anything and for 1.05 B that's actually kind of impressive so as you can see most of the science points which we have spent on the stone science presentation was almost earned back in one day some of the guests are roaming around where there is absolutely nothing so what would be actually a good 
thing to do or consider doing is put like a donation box somewhere around here so that the money does not sit for too long in their pockets and is rather donated and this is the junk which I was referring to so hopefully our janitor will show up and clean this mess up otherwise I'm gonna kick their ass you can also fire your employee but I'm not gonna probably do that for now uh, also thanks to us building in few more things I, I don't know why the two of you are F1 trash can Seriously, what the heck is wrong with you? Go here, clean the mess. So he's gonna start cleaning the mess. We're gonna soon get the summary for day two. The money which we are earning is now almost doubled. Also because I have not constructed that many things, except of like the research station, the presentation station, and the hot dog stand. Our expense should not be that massive. So let's take a look at the summary and on the next day we'll try to talk about how to get the next dinosaurs. Overall there are six classes or six family trees of dinosaurs which you can get. We're gonna go over all of them. There are 32 species overall which you can get at this point at the game. Uh, except of the Theropoda family tree, which is your carnivores, uh, which are seven of them. The rest of the species which you can get, or the family trees, so like the Ceratopsia, where you have, for example, Triceratops, or Protoceratops, or Styricosaurus, uh, you will have only five animals for, for that tree. Okay, so you can see now that the ticket sales are still only at 350 and already on second day the donations are almost our primary source of income, but food and drinks is what's actually paying for most of, let's say, the payroll or the donations are able to actually just cover the payroll, so the dinosaur food is definitely not that effective or negatively affecting us lots of guests still keep coming over here but i'm really hoping that if we put another exhibit over here they're gonna want to stick around and this long pathway will be able to be crammed with bunch of food stands or other stuff so let's go to the other day and let's discuss how to get more dinosaurs Now, I kind of do realize that this first video might be a bit longer, but I'm trying to cram in a stupid amount of information, and that information might be really helpful, helpful sorry, for some of you, so I really hope someone will appreciate it. You know, it looks like our dinosaur is being taken care of, so she looks to be healthy, definitely needs some enrichment, unfortunately, because the Ankylosaurus uh, is a social animal. It's usually better to build an enclosure which has more animals. One of the biggest negatives of this game is that you cannot predetermine the sex of the animal which is being hatched from the egg. So it's not like in Jurassic Park, unfortunately. And we're gonna cover as to why this can be negative for you as a zoo manager. So how do we get dinosaurs and what do we do with them? In order for you to get dinosaurs, you need to work with the portals and you need to have staff employed at your park. Here's why. If we go into the portal, you will be able to put together a crew of your employees. So let's say it's you, it's your security guy, it's your scientist, it's your veterinarian, and it's your janitor. As you can see, they have these weird types of shapes and they will remind you of like Tetris. The fun way that the creators have decided to allow the players to get more fossils for their park is to create a small mini game which will help you get a break from just monitoring the day-to-day -day 
uh, running of your zoo. Now, what we need to do here is to choose a few things. First of all, you have the six family trees which I talked about. So right now we are only able to go and find the Ankylosaurus fossils, which sucks. And we have Ceratopsia where we have the Triceratops, then we have the Ornithopoda and Sauropoda and all the other family trees. And basically once we unlock them through certain research, we are able to change what types of fossils we are getting. And based on how deep you want to go in the ground, you can change the depth. And based on the depth, you might come across more fossils, certain types of hats, science or money as a reward, or even uh, more heart points or other bonuses. The deepest you can go is the mantle level, it will cost you actually $5,000, there's like a stupid amount of stuff which you can get, but uh, because you are only able to use this certain amount of times, we're gonna go now for the purposes of this video and just do the basic excavation. So this will be actually running and the cool thing is that we don't have to sit here like a bunch of idiots uh, watching the bar getting filled. So we are gonna actually go visit the town and I'm gonna show you the hatchery. A hatchery is where you are getting your dinosaurs from. And as you can see, they are divided into certain types of tier. So you would have like a common tier, like a more advanced tier, rare tier and your super rare tier where you can get even like the Tyrannosaurus, for example. Reason why this is super rare is that you need just 20 heart points and 2000 science points just to unlock this type of species. And the lower you go, the less are the requirements. Now for the start of any playthrough, I usually recommend for anyone to stick with the herbivores. Uh, best choice to go with is either the Ankylosaurus, Triceratops or Stegosaurus because they require certain type of enclosure. So for example Triceratops and Stegosaurus do require the biome of rainforest which means that you will need to put like grassland and because it's a rainforest you're just gonna have to cram in a stupid amount of water to make it all swamp for them right but other than that if you would want to go with let's say the velociraptor there is a problem because this is a desert biome species and if you would go into your scenery you might have some rocks but as you can see, the bushes are locked and so are the trees. So basically you would not be able to make the dinosaurs happy in their enclosure and because the dinosaurs are, are unhappy, the guests are unhappy and when anyone or everyone is unhappy, the zoo is losing its appeal. So we're gonna definitely try to negate this and you are not having fun. I'm sorry for that, I'm gonna try to put in like a balloon stand or something. And this is why I don't understand this game, because for crying out loud there is not a single adult and I'm just going to put a balloon stand for a bunch of grown-ups so that they can be buying balloons. That's just the weirdest thing ever. So if we put in the balloon stand, people will be able to come, get their hands on some balloons, spend more money, be happier, and actually when I played this, yeah, you can see the balloon dinosaurs. Now if your employees reach the dig site, I usually recommend you to pause the game because oftentimes what might happen is that you end up around like or something p.m. and you are unable to go into the dig or you go into the dig and the countdown for the closing of the park will start to run and what this will do is basically kick you out of the mini game where you are trying to uncover the fossils you'll need to go into the summary start up the next day and then return to the dig 
So usually just uh, pause the game and this is how it works. So overall we have to uncover 12 items. Each item usually consists of 4 tiles in the space. Now this game is sort of a mix between like Tetris and the Minesweeper. What I usually do is make sure that I have a security personnel. I tend to use all of their turns and by doing so I tend to uncover quite a lot of the fossils. So now I can just play around with the shapes and try to get my hands on the remaining fossils. For example, if we would be able to go like so, like so. And I know this is not probably the most efficient use of these shapes. I'm quite sure someone will be telling me in the comment section that I don't know what the hell I'm doing, which is usually uh, true. I mean, these are not your professional walkthroughs channel after all. But we are gonna uncover these. There are two more, so we're gonna try to do this. And since we have everything, we can now successfully return to home. And if we go into the hatchery, and we would switch to the ankylosaurus, we would see that we have now 5 skulls, 7 footprints, but we are missing the imperfect gem. If you want to get your hands on a gem, you need to go into the mysterious gem hunt. Based on what types of animals have you unlocked through the hatchery, you will be able to buy, let's say, the imperfect gem or the rare gem, or the super rare gem or whatever these things are called these days and basically this will actually affect your money quite a lot because for example like I said if you want to get your hands on the Tyrannosaurus uh, you will need just 2000 science points 20 heart points but the cost of this gem alone is ten thousand dollars so this is not your starting species that is why you need to stick with the ankylosaurus triceratops or anything else and i usually recommend to anyone who is playing the game to not spend their first hard points on let's say the acme or acme society or security because this reduces the effects of the guests staring at the dinosaurs otherwise this is a really great tech to have because actually it reduces the stress or the unhappiness of your dinosaurs so it will definitely help you out and this place is just filled with balloons however if you go here not that many balloons are over here so we're gonna definitely try to cram in as many stands along this pathway as we can but i will try to make sure that they don't like go into the walkway because it's not that aesthetically pleasing to me or maybe to somebody else who will care if they will watch this video until this point now if you are watching until this point make sure you subscribe to more fun content as i publish videos on a weekly basis on all sorts of things from playthroughs to discussions to tips to early access reviews and other stuff which I can do with my fairly limited hardware so you will have always something fun to watch but anyhow yeah uh, we have covered quite a lot of stuff and I feel like the episode might be quite long so I'm gonna let the park close and I'm gonna probably cut off the episode here I'm gonna try to publish another episode so that we can get another enclosure and for that we're gonna probably have to wait like one additional day because we are gonna need five hard points as the overall goal is to get four dinosaurs for the park so theoretically speaking this space over here can be turned into one massive enclosure which can contain three dinosaurs but I would actually prefer to put in a different species because the more rare species you put in the more profitable the enclosure or exhibit becomes 
and therefore we're going to see what we can do with that. But for that, you should consider subscribing so you know when the next episode will be published here on the channel. So hit the notification button too so that you will know. Usually my thumbnails are kind of hard to be missed because they look like a really bad meme. Uh, but yeah, uh, that will be it for now. I really hope that this intro into how to start off your zoo will be helpful to someone. And hopefully I will see you in the comments or at the next one. Please let me know what you think of the quality of the mic too. I'm still waiting to get like the microphone arm to improve the overall quality so that it's picking up less stuff like the clicking of the keyboards or other things. But yeah, other than that, I'm going to wish you a pleasant rest of the day and hopefully I will see you at the next one. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.